Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Advisor with Stacey Chalami. Today, I'm very excited because we have a very special guest. It's David Meltzer, and he is a speaker, author. He was a sports executive, an investor, and he's an entrepreneur. He's done it all, and he continues to keep going. He just goes and goes and goes, and in his, in his journey, he is determined to help a billion people. His story is outstanding, and he's just a remarkable individual with a huge heart made of gold. And today he's on our show at to grace us with his presence, and he has some really encouraging words that he wants to share with you and share a little about himself. David, I'm so happy to have you on the show. You know, it's it's just a you know I you know, I'm speechless. You know, I just you know I love everything you do. You're an in, uh, amazing individual, and I just you know I, I would love for you just to share some of the things you've gone through in life and maybe explain to people why gratitude. You know, you speak about gratitude a lot, and you speak about you know why it's so important to give back to others. And I feel that it, it's really important that others realize this. And you you, know, you also mentioned you talk about how receive. And, and being able to ask in the need of help if you you know if you're a lot of people are afraid to do that too you know um, these are things that I think are so important to talk about but first why don't you tell some people about your you know some of the things you've gone through in life that inspired you to become the person you are today well I appreciate that Stacy and uh, I am empowering over a billion people so don't limit me uh, so many people put limitations on the imagination and we will never overachieve our own self-image. And that's why I'm trying to do what I do to pour into other people to increase or expand their own self-image by developing the necessary skills, the knowledge of who and what, and increase their desire that they must be what they can be as part and parcel of the unified infinite system of omniscient power that we belong to together. But my journey really has three different time zones, I call them. The first was the one time zone that I was born into, the time zone of a world of not enough, uh, where people are victims, that everything happens to you, and you're always in a mode of comparison. And now, I was blessed to have an extraordinary mom, a single mom that raised six kids, five boys and a girl, uh, who instilled education as empowerment to expand where we wanted to be or better. Uh, so her philosophies were one of many parents, you know, doctor, lawyer, or failure, believing the fetus wasn't fully developed till after graduate school, things like that. And so my siblings who are also extraordinary, uh, they followed the path of academia and ended up at Harvard Penn in Columbia, graduating summa cum laude, following the inspiration and education that my mom gave them of how to be successful. Uh, now for me, I wanted to be rich. Uh, and the reason is I was super happy, uh, even though we were super poor and yeah. I was super loved, uh, even though we were super poor. And so the only interference, uh, or, um, negative things in my life were all around financial insecurity, uh, the car breaking down or couldn't afford to go to summer camp or a variety of other comparative things financially. Uh, and so not only did it lessen my gratitude towards uh, the love in the family that I was born into, uh, but it also distorted my opinion of happiness because I believed that my true happiness would be found through financial gain, that money would buy me uh, the happiness and the love that I felt was missing in my life. And so I put my attention and intention on being rich to buy my mom a house and a car and graduated law school with two great job offers. One to be an oil and gas litigator, was offered $150,000 a year plus bonus in 1992. So uh, I knew that uh, I would resolve the financial insecurity, but I also was offered a job in the internet, uh, selling legal research online in 1992. And uh, asking my mom for advice, she told me without a doubt to be a real lawyer that the internet would never last, it was a fad, and it wasn't going to provide me the $250,000 comp plan that they had promised. Uh, and yet, knowing that just because someone loves you doesn't mean they give you good advice, I ended up taking the legal research internet job, and nine months out of law school, I was a millionaire. Bought my mom that house in a car, and I was in a uh, fooled mindset that money did buy me love and happiness. I felt for the first time that I was my mom's favorite, 
that I finally stood out amongst my superior siblings. And three years after I started that job, we exited uh, with Thomson Reuters for $3.4 billion in 1995. I then wow. went to the Silicon Valley, raised hundreds of millions of dollars in middleware. And then by 31, I was living my dream life. I was worth over $100 million, married to my dream girl, living in my dream home in San Diego, could afford to do whatever, whenever I wanted with whoever I wanted. Uh, but for the first time in my life, I wasn't happy. And uh, because of the lack of joy and passion and purpose, uh, I started surrounding myself with the wrong people and the wrong ideas and utilizing as many do drugs and alcohol in order to numb the pain uh, and the lack of purpose, which then accelerated uh, myself into a position where, believe it or not, I ran the most notable sports agency in the world called Lee Steinberg Sports and Entertainment. Uh, uh, made the movie Jerry Maguire. Cameron Crowe made the movie Jerry Maguire about our firm. And I was Warren Moon's business partner as well. So not only now at 36 was I a multimillionaire, but I had access to what billionaires couldn't even afford to do. Sidelines and backstages of the biggest sporting and entertainment events with the who's who of sports and entertainment, billionaires, millionaires, et cetera. And uh, there was four red flags that, I may not have been in a place that I wanted to be. The first was at 30, my father uh, gave me a jacket for my 30th birthday. Had never given me a gift for 20 years when he forgot my birthday at 10, but he gave me yeah. a jacket with no pockets. And I asked him why he would do that. He told me he was worried about me, that I was just like him, that I thought money would buy all the love and happiness, but he wanted to remind me by hanging that jacket in my closet that you can't take anything with you. And at that time I wasn't ready to hear him. So I told him to F you, I hate you. Uh, yeah. My mom uh, from 30 to 36 continually, as much as she loved me and supported me, told me she was constantly worried about me. And I would tell her, don't worry, you're annoying me. I make more in a day than you made in your lifetime and uh, used my identity of money uh, to feel superior to someone who is much more superior than I. And then uh, my best friend, as I ran Lee Steinberg, I invited him to the masters, the third red flag. And he told me, no, I don't want to go with you. Uh, I don't care if it's a private jet. We get to go backstage at the cabins with Curtis Strange and others. I don't like who you hang out with and I don't like what you're doing. I told him I wasn't doing anything wrong. And that I couldn't believe he didn't want to be with me. And he said, David, you can lie uh, to me all you want, but stop lying to yourself. You're going to end up dead and I don't want to be around. Two weeks yeah. later, my life would change forever. I had been living in the world of just enough for me. You talked mm -hmm. about giving and receiving. I believe the more you give, the more you receive. But I didn't understand the context of the infinite flow of abundance according to giving and receiving being one. And so two weeks later, uh, I went to the Grammy Awards with Little John the Rapper, and I lied to my wife because she told me not to go, that I wasn't paying attention to my work, my family, and I was partying way too much, and she was very concerned. So I lied to her, and I went and came home wasted at 5.30 in the morning, and that's when my life would change forever because my wife was waiting for me to tell me she wasn't happy and that she was leaving me and that I better take stock and who I was and what I wanted to become or I was going to end up dead. And she didn't want my three daughters who were all under 10 to be around me anymore. I went wow. to bed. I told her to F off. I hated her. I hated my best friend. I hated my mom and I hated my dad. I went to bed with a heart and a head and hands full of hate. So I woke up thinking, how could I punish them, steal their joy. And of course, since money bought joy, happiness and fulfillment, I was going to take everything away from them financially. Mm -hmm. And as I sat there crying full of hate, thinking to myself how much I hated all four of those people and how dare they say the things that they were saying about me when everyone else loved me. And all mm -hmm. they did was tell me how great I was. I looked over in my closet and for the first time in six years, I saw that jacket. 
Mm -hmm. I immediately sunk. And I realized as I looked at that jacket that I did not hate my mom and dad or my best friend. And I certainly didn't hate my wife. I hated myself. I was the liar, the cheater, manipulator, the overseller, the back end seller that all four of them told me I was. And so I sat there all day thinking about who I was and what I wanted to become. And that's when my foundational values of gratitude to give me the light, the love and the lessons from the past, forgiveness to give me ease of what I had done in the past, accountability to learn the lessons through being responsible for attracting and participating in a perception to teach me what I needed to know to make this a divine detour, not punishment, but yet protection, promotion, and love. And then effective communication to be and live inspired to allow God to come through me for others. And so I begged my wife to stay with me. She told me as long as I would try to become the man that I could be, that she would stay with me. She didn't give me an ultimatum. She didn't say, if I catch you drinking, if you do this, it was simply, as long as you are trying to be the man that I know you can be, I will be with you. And so uh, we've been married 27 years. My wife has saved my life. Behind every amazing man is an amazing woman, but also I like to also share, it's also there. there's an amazed woman as well because she knows the truth about you. And my wife still can't believe uh, the progress that I've made over the last 18 years, where now I make more money, help more people and have more fun than I ever have. And two years after the transformational day of my life, where my wife saved me, I lost everything and I was prepared for it. I knew I was protected, promoted and loved by it. And I was ready, as I have explained, to progress in a divine direction notating that all detours are divine in their nature to protect, promote, and love me and to allow divine time to unravel the meaning of my past to accelerate, aggregate, and compound my future. Wow, that's so powerful. There are so many people out there that want that transformation. And, and a lot of times it does. It, it We have to hit rock bottom sometimes before we actually make that transition. Because sometimes we get caught up in that environment that we don't really see ourselves for who we are. And, you know, deep down inside, we might, you know, we know the truth, but we don't, we're in denial. And, and I think that's the biggest thing is when you're in denial and you don't want to accept who you are, that's, that's when the problem begins. But for you, you know, you you just you hit rock bottom. You knew you you your wife was about to leave you. She she gave you one more chance to make that transformation. And as long as you tried, she was willing to be there by your side. And was that the main motivator that caused the transformation? Was was that what really ma made you decide that you know I you know my family is more important to me than anything else? I don't want to lose the people I love. It was the fact that the people I loved, uh, it was the people that actually loved me uh, mm. were right. And so I think, you know, getting out of this energy gap of understanding the difference between who I am and who I want people to think I am right. and the people who love me the most, my mom, my dad, my best friend and my wife, they knew who I was. Yes. And they saw who I wanted people to think I was. And mm -hmm. they wanted to heal the insecurities that I had and lessen the distance of resistance that I was creating in my life through sharing wisdom and also faith to shorten that distance. And so for me, my wife is my ultimate inspiration, but all four of those people, when I realized why is it that the people who love me the most unconditionally uh, don't like who I am. Right. Everybody else loves who I am. And maybe I should take a different perspective and transform into who they know I am instead of trying to have other people think I am. That transformation was when you started to make that transformation, you know, where did you begin? 
because for some people, they're kind of lost. Like they they want something better for themselves. They want to transform into that person that they 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 see themselves, you know, possibly can become that person that will be a better, you know, a better person to society, a better person to the world and contribute more to others, others people's lives. But how do you begin that transformation? Well, first, surround yourself with the right people and the right ideas. The fastest yeah. way to get to where you want to be is to find someone that's already there and ask yeah. them for directions and then help other people get to where they want to be. And so knowing my who, uh, yeah. I fired uh, a few childhood friends from my life. Mm -hmm. I allowed other friends to fall away uh, right. that were not in my divine direction. And so yeah. uh, when I realized that, you know, I was spending and warranting too much time with people I didn't know, barely knew, or that weren't looking out for my best interest, weren't yes. aligned with my divine direction. I started to spend more time with the people that are aligned with my divine direction. And I sought mentors, uh, Bob Proctor and Wayne Dyer and Sharon Lecter. And I have a sleep coach. Uh, one of the instant and early things I realized was, wow, what an advantage to be able to be an expert at sleep. A third of my yeah. life is spent sleeping. Purpose of sleep is to recover and access information to transcend to the next day at the higher self. And right. so when I you know, realized that you're either humble or you're about to be, uh, my life changed and I started to surround myself with the right people and the right ideas and uh, everything started to progress in the divine direction. The detours in my life were also considered divine. And then I was living in divine time by utilizing man-made time in an yes. efficient, effective, and statistically successful way to be productive, accessible to others and access and receive, but also in a gracious way to find the light, the love, and the lessons and all the people, places, things, circumstances, and events in my life. A lot of times, you know, people, you know, they get overwhelmed because they think it's going to be, you know, when they start making these changes, because our society wants quick results, you know, and, and sometimes it doesn't, it doesn't happen overnight. You know, is there advice you can give people that, you know, want, that are in the process of making that transformation? They're getting rid of those negative friends. They're, they're looking towards mentors that can give them good direction and guidance. You know, for you, was it a long process to get where you wanted or was it simple changes that started to kind of build up and, and made, turned you into the person that you are today? It always takes longer than you anticipate and it costs much more money no matter what. And so what I've yeah. learned is to attach my emotions to my daily activities aligned mm -hmm. with where I want to be or better. And so right. once I remove the emotional attachment to a certainty that human beings can't have, which is the capability of understanding or knowing outcomes. So yeah. for example, the day when I had to go tell my mom uh, that I was bankrupt, but not only bankrupt, but I hadn't taken my name off of her title. So mm -hmm. not only I had lost over a hundred million dollars in all my homes, but I lost my mom's home and she had to move. Wow. That outcome in no way was I capable or understanding the powerful promotion and protection and love that came from that outcome. Yeah. Uh, the understanding the revelation that occurred in divine time. And so via these circumstances of today, by attaching my emotions, my inspiration and motivation to the activities of a day, according to the actual circumstances of the day, to derive yeah. the meaning and lessons from the past, to help aggregate, accelerate, and compound exponentially the outcomes that I want are better, is a right. true epiphany of transformation. Because so many people, they say to themselves, as I did, I will be happy when... When mm -hmm. I graduate from law school, business school, get married, have children, make my first 5 million, 10 million, 100 million. Yes. Well, the truth is you will never be happy when, but if you learn to enjoy the things that you don't like or love, if you learn to enjoy the things that other people don't like or love, if you learn to enjoy consistently every day, persistently without quit these things, life will tell yeah. you all its secrets. And if you know all of life's secrets, if you know the cheat codes to life, life becomes easy and it allows you to identify the dis-ease 
the diseasy yeah. in your life. And the more we can identify what we're doing to interfere with our health, our wealth, our happiness, our joy, our empowerment, fulfillment, passion, and purpose, the more we realize what puts us at dis-ease, interferes with the omniscient and all-powerful, the more easy, the more enjoyable, the more happy, and the more happiness, wealth, health, and worthiness comes into our lives. So it seems like you're more a firm believer in, in, in the present tense. Look, focus in on today, focus in on the now, and not so much looking or worrying about the future, but focus in on, on today and making the most for today in a divine direction of the future. So as long as I look at today of what I want, who I can help, who can help me, how best to get it done and prioritize. Remember, prioritization is the antidote to procrastination and feeling overwhelmed. If you know what to do now and know what to do next, you'll never procrastinate. You'll never right. feel overwhelmed. And you won't even search for your why. You'll apply your why. And so I actually you know, share, and I will with your community, uh, my five daily practices in my book. I will sign a book, send it to you, pay for shipping, pay for the book for anyone in your audience. Just email me directly, david at dmeltzer.com because understanding the relationship between the past, present, and future is a critical reconciliation in order to effectuate this idea of fulfillment uh, by knowing the what, the who, the how, the now, and applying your why because it's the meaning of the past that limits our future and it's yeah. our self-image that will never be overachieved. And the way that we work within the context of these daily practices to get to where we want to be or better, faster, and have exponentiality of outcomes creates a greater fulfillment and allows us to live at ease in the infinite, abundant, unified system that we give more, we're given more, we receive more, and we ask for more than more. In other words, we live in the world of more than enough. Right. That's so powerful. That that's amazing. You know, I, I feel like it, it's you, you really you've really come to really absorb and understand a lot about life, and and a lot of it has to do with the experiences that you endure throughout your entire life. But you know, how how are you able to really um, put together everything? Because you know, sometimes people they're when when they're going through everything and they're they're changing their life, and and you know, it's it's hard to sometimes figure out things. And you know, for you, was there specific things that you utilized or, or applied to your life that helped you to figure out the things that you, now that you're telling me right now that are you know that, that make amazing sense and and you know that could help people you know, really, you know, start to get their, their, their life together and transition into that, that person that they really, you know, want to become so they can live a fulfilled life. Absolutely. Well, I know that time is the only dependent variable of human experience. Uh, mm -hmm. We are given 24 hours a day to utilize every day of our life, except for the last day will be cheated. And so <laughs> number one, understanding time within the context of either non-negotiable time or negotiable time. You see the commitment of consistent behavior to know my non-negotiables provide me 90% of my success, but it's the variant behavior that allows me to utilize what's counterintuitive and counter human nature, which is to be consistent because the simple things to do, like saying thank you, yeah. are simple not to do every day because you right. need a consistency. So what I do is I take my non-negotiables and apply time, a minimum amount of time to it every day. So a minimum of an hour on my health, a minimum of an hour with my family, a minimum on my faith, a minimum amount of time on my finance, a minimum amount of time studying time, a minimum amount of time being in contact with other people that are relative to me. And as the three and a half hours a day of non-negotiable time, plus the seven hours of non-negotiable sleep time, it leaves about 13 and a half hours to do whatever the F I want. And right. knowing that it's the variant behavior that allows me to enjoy the consistent behavior, but it also is the variant behavior that allows me to learn lessons, make mistakes, setbacks, failures, that will only also contribute to the enhancement of the non-negotiables of health, family, finance, and faith and time that I utilize to accelerate, aggregate, and compound. Uh, and what a great question. I have time for one more question, my dear. 
Okay. So I, you know, one thing when we were on LA Tribune, I, I really loved how you were talking about um, how it's okay to ask. And it, it was one of the biggest things I find is that people, you know, they have so much to give and they need a little help. But the problem is, is that they're afraid to reach out and ask. And I always say to people, the worst thing they could say is no, you know, and, you know, and so, you know, and that's the really the worst thing, you know, but for you, you know, what's your advice to individuals that kind of, you know, because there's so many people that, you know, need the help, want the help, you know, they, they, they have a great connection with somebody, but they're just afraid to reach out and say, can you help me with X, Y, Z? What's your intake or advice to these people? Well, first of all, the best thing someone can say to you is no. You're made by the people that say no to you. They stop wasting your time if they're <laughs> honest about saying that they can't or aren't capable or don't want to because of time, right. emotion, or value. So that that's another mistake that other people make. But more importantly, to ask. And I think I offend some people when I tell them that if you don't ask for more, if you don't ask for help, you don't have faith. Yeah. Uh, and what, what I mean by that is if, you truly have faith that you live in an abundant world with something bigger than you that loves you more than your mom. And you believe, or you tell people you believe in a world that's omniscient and all powerful with an infinite amount of abundance, more than enough of everything for everyone. Yeah. I've heard people tell me that. And then I'm like, well, if there's more than enough for everyone, why aren't you asking for some of it? You yeah. know, if I was sitting at the table at dinner with you, and blessed to have dinner with you. And we had a thousand meals stacked at our table. I promise you other people would not feel bad about walking by and saying, hey, can I have one of those steaks? You know, <laughs> can I have some of your fish? They wouldn't yeah. feel bad about it. But that's because they know it's clear that they're helping us by asking for help, asking right. for our, our meals or they're helping clear our table. They don't yeah. want to, that's the philosophy. So if you have faith, there's more than enough so if, if you want something, if you need help, think about a table full of whatever you want, and then you'll feel great about asking and giving someone the joy of giving you what they have and they're capable of having it. And so I believe that, you know, people live in a zero sum game. Unfortunately for me, the most generous, kindest people like the single moms and the teachers and the first responders and our, uh, you know, unbelievable United States veterans. These are people that will give everything, including their life to everyone yeah. else, but they give a hundred percent and then mm -hmm. they feel bad about asking even for a hundred percent back. They, yeah. so they take 90% or 98%. So they live in a zero sum game and they end up at zero. Right. Where if you give more, you're given more and you're aware of all you're given through gratitude, forgiveness, and accountability, and you receive it and are worthy of it. And mm -hmm. then you ask for more than more. Now you have more than more to give. You're given more than more. You receive more than more. You ask for more than more than more. Instead of ending up at zero, you end up with more than enough of everything. Right. And yeah. you can now be part of the infinite loop of abundance and that's what you have uh, created for your community. Once again, I'd love to provide the five daily practices, my book, david at dmelzer.com. I'll pay for the book shipping, sign it, whatever you want. All you got to do is ask. I got plenty of books and plenty <laughs> of stamps. So don't worry. I got a whole table full of books. Just ask. I, I would love to give it david at dmelzer.com. Stacy, we're going to do so much more together. I really enjoy listening to you speak as well. So if anyone out there has not heard Stacy, she brings it from the stage and beyond. What a blessing you are. Please invite me back. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time and your wisdom. You know, today has been a great day because, you know, you have such great, um, just great knowledge, experience, and your advice is just overwhelmingly um, so beneficial for, for everybody. Now, just before you leave, where can people can contact you? Because I, you know, you do so much for so many people and I want people just to know the services you provide this way they can contact you and you could help them in return. Email me directly. I answer every email myself. I'm extremely accessible. You can Google my name, David Meltzer, email me, David at dmeltzer.com. I have free Friday trainings, books, meetups, holding courts, speeches. Uh, I'm on many tours. Uh, 
I have TV shows, movies. I have group uh, networking groups uh, you can join. I have a wait list if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching or business advisory. We're blessed to have more than enough and be part of our community, david at dmelter.com. Thank you, Stacey. We'll see oh, you soon. Thank you. Yes, have a great day. Thank you.